All right, everybody, this is Ross. I thought in today's video we would make a tribute video to a friend of mine, Mario Di Natale, who, in my mind, is one of the better fig rowers, one of the best fig rowers that I've ever met. Um, he has passed away recently. And some of you maybe even know him. Some of you guys um, may have met him. Uh, maybe you've seen him on figs for fun or our figs or maybe you have no idea who he is what I wanted to do in this video was tell you guys the story of how I met Mario um, or at least I should say my visit um, to see Mario in Connecticut because he really you know he really was a role model in my life and not just with figs you know he really knew what he was doing with figs he's been growing them his whole life he had so much to share, such interesting things uh, that he was doing at his in his operation there. But he made a huge impact in my life regarding wine. And I never really had liked wine prior to meeting him. Um, I didn't know really anything about him when I met him, other than that he liked figs. And he was so generous with his time um, and even his wine. And I got to actually taste some of his wine, and I I was just blown away. And from that point, he really has made a big impact on my life about wine, and even, even in the world of figs. So I figured I would tell you guys the story of my visit um, to Mario. And this was three years ago in 2018. So it's been a little over three years ago that I got to see him. And this is his operation, at least. This was his greenhouse that the top of it, had a, it had a top to it. But the neighbor, I guess, really didn't appreciate that and just causing problems. And they made the town, I guess the town made him take it down. So they had to lower the height of it. And so Mario put over a netting over the top, bird netting. Um but this was a greenhouse with really nice concrete in here. I think even the concrete, you could heat it up. Um, what's really amazing, though, is all that thermal mass in this area. Even though he didn't have the greenhouse that he wanted, he still had so much heat. Uh, and the figs did really well uh, at his location because of that heat. You know, He had some of them planted in the ground along wires, and he would train them low almost like a spies. He even had a lot of them in, in containers, and he had so many varieties that uh, you know, every time he would go to Italy and visit a winery, um, he would also find a fig tree and take cuttings with him back to the United States. Um, he also you know, met Paolo Bologna in Italy and I guess became good enough friends with them that Paolo gave him a crazy amount of his varieties uh, to grow here in the United States. And it was really from that, from Mario, because he's so generous that we as other as growers were able to really um, grow many of those varieties and um, benefit from that. You know, this here, what I thought was really amazing about his setup was this cart because he would drive the cart up and down the, the rows and he would have a cutting board on it. He had a knife, he had the scale... He had a trash can underneath, and then he also had a pencil. But the pencil was interesting because he had these tags, and the tags would um, were vinyl, and I talked about this in a couple videos now, making the best garden tags, which are just vinyl blinds, white, and you just write pencil on them, and they last forever. And the pencil lasts for a season or two, depending on, on you know how... I guess the angle of the tag in relation to the rain and maybe some other things that could degrade the pencil, but it lasts a super long time. And he would take very detailed notes as he would go through the rows and taste the fruits and pick the fruits. Um, you know, this was a really big passion project of his growing up with figs and uh, coming here to the United States. He, you know, obviously got more and more into it because they're just less and less accessible, especially in Connecticut, where it is more difficult to grow figs, obviously, than Italy. Um, so this is just one way to do it, I guess, is just 
you're going to take very detailed notes and write it there on the tag. And he, you know, this is the variety name or the variety um, number, excuse me. This is the variety name. Here's the, the dates in which he picked the Bravas in the main crop. Then he has the number of figs that he picked up until that point. And then this actually meant something as well, if I'm not mistaken. And then at the bottom here was notes. And then at the end of the season, he would bring all these tags in and he would put it into a database. And that database is really, unf it's unfortunate because when Mario passed away, a lot of knowledge passed away with him. It's just unfortunate. It's just a fact of, you know, life. Um, and the database, unfortunately, I don't know if we'll ever recover all of the information in that, which is, um, you know, really upsetting to me. He, I did end up getting a number of things from him. I tried to, you know, communicate with him and try to get that database made public or available to people and he just couldn't he couldn't do it it just wasn't uh possible or something was preventing him from doing that and um again it's a shame but here's you know a whole list here of when the figs ripen the variety names the you know etc cetera, etc cetera. here's photos that he took at the fruits and the, well on the scale and you know some of them cut open and the variety names and then he had notes as well in the database um, it was just really well done. And here's also, you know, where they came from, other possible names, you know, all kinds of different things here that he would write about them. So for me, um, you know, this was an inspiration of how to do this. And I talked about that, you know, in another video that we did uh, when we visited him. You know, I, I did a video, if anyone has seen it, or maybe you can go back and find it, I'm sure you can talking about all of this and how we were going to do this in the future. And I did, um, created the tags, even had way more detail than him on them. I just could not keep up with it. Um, with the many things that were going on in my life. So, but it is a, it is a nice lesson. And the other thing that Mario would do or would help with was actually, cause he was so knowledgeable that he would actually help in an ag station there in Connecticut that, they were trying to learn how to grow figs commercially in Connecticut, in a short season climate, in a cold climate. And he was so knowledgeable that they always consulted with him. And, you know, they can see, you could see here's their greenhouse for their growing containers in here. They have them under drip in large pots. I got to go in here and taste some of the fruits and see some of the trees. And then uh, also they were experimenting as well, even with, um, tree is growing in the ground so they wanted to really figure this out and they were using mario as a great source of information um in terms of a lot of the things that he knows about heat protecting the trees in the winter um he was just so knowledgeable on those things so this was really what we did is i just went to a setup we went through the, all the rows picked all the figs tasted so many fruits and then he took us out to lunch and we went to this pizza place he knew the owner really great friends and they brought us all kinds of food it was just crazy how much food it was and they, they put the figs that we picked on the pizza that they made it was just so so cool the whole thing and then all of a sudden he brings out a bottle of wine and i'm like where did you even get this like i didn't even know where he got like i didn't see him bring it in i don't know how he he had the wine uh i didn't even know he was into wine um i'm sure he you know obviously an italian man would drink wine but you know, at the time I didn't even like wine. So, but he, you know, he was offering. So I said, why not? Let's try it. And he opens up the bottle and he pours it in the glass. And this is a white and he, he swishes it around the glass and then dumps it. And I'm like, Oh, something's about to happen. Like this, this guy really knows what he's doing. Pours another white, or another uh, little bit of white there in the glass and hands it to me. And I just was pretty shocked about how good it was. Um, again, I never had liked wine and I think it was just simply due to the fact that I didn't know what good wine was. No offense to my grandparents, but they don't drink very good wine. Um, so I'd always thought it tasted like feet, to be honest. Um, so I was really impressed and I was really loving it. And Mario was really happy that I was into it. Um, and 
I didn't realize it, but he had another bottle, and he because I, I guess I was so happy, or because I was so into it, he opens up another bottle, and I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> you know, slow down a little bit here. <laughs> this time it was a red, and he pours it in the glass, same thing, swishes it around, dumps it, pours more wine in the glass, and then hands it to me, and I just could not believe, guys, I could not believe how good that wine was. To this day, it's still... This is it right here. Barbaresco 2005 Albasani. Uh, just incredible. Incredible wine. Um, so this really, I guess, from here exposed me to wine because I just went nuts at this point. And he, he also had brought me to – he was so generous – with his time and his money and his wine and his figs that he even brought me to his wine store, got to see his wine store, and he even gave me a bottle to take home. So, really, I mean, the guy is just incredible, such a nice person, such a knowledgeable fig grower. And then, of course, he's been to so many wineries in Italy that he just knows the best wine. And this is here, a bottle that he... Uh, he gave me here and he actually um, told me to save it for a special occasion which I've been these last three years and I thought I'd save it you know and I'll save it for my um, when I get my CPA license so I did I got my license um, but I, I hadn't really had a chance to actually do any celebrating yet and then I found out Mario had passed. So I figured in this video, this would be the tribute to Mario. Drinking his wine, appreciating him as a person, and what he did for me as a role model. And uh, yeah, cheers to Mario. It's so good. It's got such a great texture to it. I never thought I'd really say that about wine. There's something so pure about it and light about it. But at the same time, it's so bold. And all these dark berry-flavored fruits, you know, it doesn't have too much alcohol. It doesn't have too much acidity or too much this or too much that. It is very acidic. It is very dry, but, man, what a, like, work of art this is. You know, have it all in one package, all balanced in one thing. Um, no wonder. So, anyway, guys, um... I'm going to enjoy this wine. I hope that everybody uh, is enjoying the new year and that you will take this time to appreciate the people you have in your life. That's it. That's all I want to say because you just never know. And also, I think now more than ever, it's really important to really value the people in your life, your friends, your close friends, your family. What is life without those people? So we'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys. Have a good one.